Welcome back everybody. Thank you for joining me on another adventure. By now you're probably thinking, man, this guy's not very adventurous. All he does is walk his dingoes. But I have actually been down here three times over the last two weeks to try and record some footage to make this video for you all today. Now, the first time I came down here, the conditions weren't as good as I thought they were going to be. It was low tide, kind of like it is now. You can see the water is mounting up at the back of the reef. That makes the water quite murky at the back. So I'm not sure how good it's gonna to be today. Uh, I did come down here yesterday. It was much better. When I came here the first time, it was about a meter visibility. But what you're looking for is easterlies. So there are easterlies blowing at the moment. And you also want high tide because the high tide stops those waves from crashing against the back of the reef and it clears everything up and the water's not as murky. Before I go into it, I just want to talk to you a little bit about safety. So this reef actually starts all the way down here in the south and I'm going to get the drone up to get some better footage of the actual layout of this reef. So it starts down there in the south and it travels all the way up, all the way up here to the north. Now that stretch of reef is actually about 800 meters long so it's a long reef and what makes this reef so good is that you can access it from the beach you can see down here we've got swimmers in the water already it's uh, about 20 past 7 in the morning there's already swimmers in the water so this reef is great for people of all skill levels to come and experience so if you're a beginner there's a few things I'm going to point out in a moment with the drone footage and uh, from up here as well because this is a good vantage point. So down at the southern end, the reef completely uh, encases or completely blocks off that section of the beach. So that's like a giant rock pool down there. You can go swimming down there and it's relatively safe. Straight down here in front of me, there is a rock pool. Now, if you are looking at the drone footage right now, you'll see it from a bird's eye perspective, but I just want to point out here, that is a decent sized rock pool, probably the length of an Olympic swimming pool. Uh, you can actually, what I like to do is I like to start at this southern end here, and I like to do kind of like a drift uh, snorkel along the western wall of that reef, so the outer wall of the reef. And as you snorkel along, the current will flow nicely down here and you don't really have to do much work at all. The next thing I want to point out is straight down there on the inside of the reef wall, you can see that water is darker. So that water is actually about three meters deep. It's kind of like a big basin and it drops down inside and I'll get some footage on screen now. There's these columns of coral that come up through the center of that, uh, that drop off uh, in there. Now, safety wise, I wanna just point this out to you. See that shimmery streak of water that travels all the way out to sea up that way? And you've got a few more streaks of water heading out this way. Those are rips in the water. And essentially what's happening is there's a large volume of water traveling over the reef this direction. And all that water wants to go back out. So, because there's a large wall of rock here forming the reef, makes it very difficult for that water to leave and head back out to sea. So it travels the easiest way it possibly can. And that will either be through fissures or cracks in the reef. And you'll end up with these like shimmery streaks heading out to sea that way because the water's traveling in a different direction. Or it'll exit out through the southern end there you can see that's actually quite a large rip. That's a couple of car widths, easily a couple of car widths. And it heads all the way out that way. You, if you swim through that, it's probably going to drag you out to sea if you're not a very uh, strong swimmer. So, safety tip. If you find yourself caught in a rip and you are heading out to sea and you start to panic and you just want to try and swim back to the shore, don't do that. What you want to do is you want to swim sideways. Okay, swim sideways until you're out and then start swimming back to the reef, okay? You can see there's people stood down there. The reef, I, I've been snorkeling and diving down here for the best part of two decades, and 
that reef, you can stand on top of that reef. In high tide, it's going to be about knee to waist deep, okay? So if you get stuck in a rip, say that large one off the southern end, you can swim sideways, swim back to the reef, climb up on the reef and then cross it and then make your way back to shore that way. Or you can just walk along the reef and the reef actually connects to the beach between there and about there. So there's a large uh, portion or a large section of the reef that actually connects right up against the beach. Now I'll show you in the drone footage now something else that's really nice or something else that's really great down here. The uh, city of Wanneroo has built a permanent lifeguard shelter. So there's always lifeguards down here. Uh, back in the early days I believe they only used to man it during the summer months but it could be all year round right now. Not 100% sure on that one but I think it is manned all year round. And what you want to do is if you're you know, if you're down here swimming, swim between the flags. That's the safest thing for you to do. Uh, but they will be keeping a close eye on that section of the beach. That section of the beach, uh, like I say, it's quite shallow over there. It's relatively safe. But if you want to be 100% sure that you're going to be okay, swim on that side. That's where the lifeguard tower is. One more thing about rips. Because there is a large volume of water heading over the reef this way, it can't all escape through those cracks and fishes, fishes that I mentioned earlier. So a large volume of the water, and I'll actually put some footage on screen now, you can see the seaweed. The seaweed is traveling from south to north. That's because there's a large volume of water actually heading out this northern end. And in high tide, that can actually become quite a powerful rip as well. So you can actually find yourself being carried along the reef and get spat out I guess the northern end up there so just start swimming towards shore and you'll get out of that reef, reef, uh, that rip so that's a couple of safety points for you now let's get into the water okay so let's talk about some of the marine life you might see when you're exploring this particular reef system so some of the things that your kids can look forward to seeing as you are walking out to the rock pool you can quite possibly come across sea urchins like this guy here there's also small sea stars they have these little tiny purple ones that you might be able to see on camera now that I mention it just beneath the urchin if you look on the rock there are some very tiny purple sea stars and there's also some bright orange sea stars that you'll find along the top of the reef and then once you enter the water you might come across blowfish and if you're lucky, you'll actually see these guys swimming in very large schools, or not so lucky. I know blowfish aren't on the top of everybody's list to see when they go snorkeling, but hey, they're down here, and, in, and if you see them swimming in a large school like this, it actually looks pretty impressive. So there's blowfish down here. You'll also come across these guys. This is a banded sweep, and I saw several of them while I was swimming down here. Banded sweeps are uh, easily identified by their arrow looking shape and their silver and black stripes. Or, well, they have black stripes, their body's silver with the black stripes. There's also red lip moorwongs down here. And you might also find, even though this footage was recorded at the northern end, you might find these small silver fish with yellow fins. This particular fish is called a woodward pomfret. So there's pomfrets down here. What else? Uh, whiting, I saw this large whiting while I was swimming down here. So there is a large variety of fish and that is just inside the rock pool area. As I mentioned, this reef is great for all skill levels. So you can start off by swimming in the rock pools or swimming on the inside reef over there. Or as your skill level increases, you can start to snorkel and explore the back. Now, personally, I think the northern end of the reef is the best part of the reef to explore. You can start off on the inside of the northern, uh, the northern end, and you can actually start to, as you uh, build up a bit of courage, you can start to snorkel and explore the back of the reef. Now, I've done a scuba dive down here before, it was a really great dive. I was actually quite impressed. We were lucky we had great visibility on the day and we swam the entire length 
of the reef at the back and the average depth was about four meters the deepest point which i believe was somewhere around the center there was about seven meters and our dive lasted for an hour and 40 minutes because it was a shallow dive we didn't go through oxygen very quickly and we were able to have this really really impressive long dive we found crayfish along the back of the reef there's large schools of buffalo brim we saw snapper tarwine um, and other fish like that so the fish get a lot bigger off the back i even came across this guy when i was snorkeling yesterday this is an octopus it's a lot harder recording while you are snorkeling because you have to take a breath you dive down and eventually you run out of air you have to come up again so it makes it quite difficult to record something i do use is a weight belt so i use a three pound weight in my uh, attached to my weight belt wrap it around my waist and that just helps me be a little bit more stable in the water and makes it a little bit easier for me to try and control what's going on with the camera i put this video together today as a bit of a tutorial because i am going to start doing a lot more snorkeling and scuba diving and i thought this would be a great location to come down and to point out some safety tips how to identify rips for example you can apply that at any location you go swimming just look for the different coloration in the water and that's going to be a rip okay rips i mean even though that is a large rip and that's that that rip hasn't really changed shape since i've been here it's a long wide rip they can be much wider okay so you might find yourself caught in a rip that's 50 to 100 meters wide depends what beach you're swimming at always look for the lifeguards always try to swim between the flags something else you might want to look at investing into is some diving gloves diving gloves will protect your hands as you touch the reef if you touch the reef to stabilize yourself maybe you fall as you're walking across the reef and you need to put your hands down it's going to protect your hands so dive gloves are also a good thing to have if you're going snorkeling something else i like to wear i like to wear my dive boots and i use my dive fins I like wearing my dive boots because I can walk on top of the reef and not get cut by the sharp barnacles and things that are on top of the reef. So there's some footage here, this is a barnacle, they're very sharp, if you step on one of these you're going to know about it. So I like to wear dive boots and dive fins, a little bit more expensive but if you're going to be doing snorkeling a lot more or even getting into scuba diving then yeah you're gonna definitely want to invest in dive boots and dive fins so i hope you've enjoyed this footage today i'm gonna leave you now thank you for joining me thank you for supporting me and watching these videos and i'm gonna leave you with some more snorkeling footage as i explore the reef see you all next time